Hello everyone and welcome to Bird Year Biology. Miss Elder and I are very glad you have chosen to do biology as one of your subjects and we look forward to teaching you in the classroom but until then we will try our best to teach you through video tutorials. Each video tutorial will come with an assignment so that you can test your knowledge on the subject area. If anyone has any problems with anything then you can email me or Miss Elder. Everyone should have been added to the third year biology teams, which contains the folders and files that you will need to access the course. So to access the course material, you need to go to files, click on Life on Earth, which is labelled number one, and click on Interdependence, which is also labelled number one. Then if you want to print out worksheets and activities, pause the video and do so. Now these can be found in Biomes number one, Worksheets and Activities number two. Then go to PowerPoints and we are working on the Biome PowerPoint today. Third year is a very important year and it is important in your progression in biology. If you want to do the National 5 course in fourth year, it is important that you pay attention, attend all your classes and do all of the work asked of you to the best of your ability. If you do really well in third year and manage to meet all the level 4 outcomes, then you will be trying to do a National 5 in fourth year and you will leave third year with your National 4 qualification or parts of your National 4 qualification. If you struggle to meet all of the level 4 outcomes but achieve all of the level 3 outcomes, then you will have to do the National 4 course next year. And if you're struggling with the level 3 outcomes, then you will have to do the National 3 course next year. So it's up to you and how much effort you put in. The third year course is made up of three units, which are life on earth, multicellular and cell biology. At the end of each unit, you will either be given a national three or a national four unit assessment test. The first unit that we are going to look at is life on earth. This unit is made up of six different key areas, which you can see. And the first key area is interdependence, and that's the one that we will be looking at today. The second key area is human and natural impact. The next one is the nitrogen cycle, followed by fertilizers, adaptations and learned behaviours. Today we're going to be learning about biomes. Our learning intention is to learn about the different conditions on our planet and the huge variety of life within it. The reason that we're looking at this today is because we share our world with so many other species in a delicate balance and we need to consider our actions on our planet. So for to be successful in this lesson, you need to and meet level three outcome, you need to be able to describe what biodiversity is. Meet the level four outcomes, you need to be able to describe what a biome is, identify climactic conditions in different biomes, and describe the effects climate has on biodiversity. So before we start learning about biomes, you should pause the video and write down all of the reasons that animals depend on plants and all of the reasons that plants depend on animals. So every animal and plant on earth depend on each other in a balance and they depend on each other for survival. So the three main things that plants and animals depend on each other for are pollination, shelter and food. So plants need animals for pollination so that they can reproduce and animals like us need plants so that we can eat. So if there was no pollination, we wouldn't have many of the foods that we like. So we wouldn't have chocolate, we wouldn't have onions, we wouldn't have many of our vegetables, we wouldn't have many of our fruits because they all rely on pollination. Also, we rely on plants for shelter and so do other animals. So we can use um, wood to make timber frames, birds use branches to make nests, and also other mammals can use trees for shelter, like little crevices. And finally, we use plants and animals for food. So animals eat other animals and animals eat plants. We also use plants for many other things like medicines, perfumes and raw materials. So everything survives in a delicate balance, plants and animals are all in a delicate balance and as Mufasa says from the Lion King, it is the circle of life. As I have said, we need a range of species so that we can survive. The more species there are, the more resources that are available to us. The range or variety of the different species in an ecosystem is called biodiversity. 
So usually here we would write a note on biodiversity. So you might want to pause the video and write that down. So biodiversity is a variety of different species of plants and animals in an ecosystem. So to find the biodiversity, you would count all of the species. So for example, in the top picture, you'd have to count all of the different species that are present to find the biodiversity. So you'd obviously have your jaguar, your chicken, your parrot, your butterflies, etc. Then it asks the question at the bottom. So it says, do different parts of the world have different types of plants and animals? And why? So have a think about that and pause the video and write down your answer. So the answer to this is different parts of the world have different plants and animals. And the reason being is that different parts of the world have different climates. So they have different climates, they have different pHs, they have different oxygen levels, and they have different water levels. And the type of climates and conditions doesn't suit every organism. So for example, a dolphin is not going to survive in the Sahara Desert because it would be too dry, there's no water. Because dolphins need water so that they can breathe, so they would have to live in a water ecosystem. A camel is not going to be able to live in the Arctic because it would be too cold for the camel. The camel doesn't have enough hair or fur to protect it from these harsh cold conditions. So the camel would be survive, able to survive in the desert rather. So different organisms have different places where they can live depending on what kind of features they have and characteristics they have. This now brings us on to our two new definitions of ecosystem and biome. So ecosystems are how living things react with each other and also the non-living things in their environment, for example, air, water and sun. So basically your ecosystem is your living things and your non-living things together in a particular area. Inside the ecosystem, the organisms work together to establish a balance so each of them can flourish. So we would now write down the definition of ecosystem. So you could pause the video and write that down. And then biomes. So a biome is an area of the planet that has a similar climate. This means they have similar rainfall and temperature and they contain distinctive communities of plants and animals. Basically, it's a large ecosystem. So again, you could pause the video and write down what a biome is. Our world is made up of several biomes, which we can see in the map of the world. And each of the biomes has a name. So it's obviously color coordinated to where the biomes appear. And each of these biomes have a distinctive climate and distinctive community of plants and animals. The ones near the equator, the biomes near the equator will be the hottest because they receive the most direct sunlight. And the ones that are nearest the North Pole and the South Pole will be the coldest because they receive the least direct sunlight because of the way the angle hits off, the angle of the sun hitting off the earth. The first activity you would do if you were in school would be to colour all of the different biomes on the map so that you could see where they are all located. So you can find this worksheet in the biomes worksheet, which is number one. And then what you would do once you've got the worksheet is you would colour all of the number ones a set colour. That would show you where all of the tundras were. I'm not going to colour all of them, but just to give you an idea. And then you would get a different colour and then you'd colour all of the number twos, which would show you the taigas. And then you'd get a different colour and you'd colour all of the number threes, which would show you the grasslands and so on. So then what you can do is you can label all the different parts. So we've got the United Kingdom and we can see what biomes are in the United Kingdom. We can see what ones are in Asia, Australia, Africa, Europe, North America and South America. We're going to have a look at six of the biomes in more detail. Let's start off with the biome called the desert. So the climate of the desert is very hot and dry during the day. However, the desert temperatures can drop at night and this is because the deserts can't hold the heat because they are too dry. 
There is hardly any rain in the desert. There's only about 250 millimetres per year and only limited plants can survive these harsh, dry conditions and they have to be specially adapted to preserve water. Examples of these plants include the cacti and small bushes. As there are not many plants, there is not much food for animals to eat. And so very few animals like snakes, reptiles, hawks, camels and kangaroo desert rat can survive these harsh, harsh conditions of the desert. Deserts are found between 15 to 30 degrees north and south of the equator. And two examples of deserts are the Great Basin in North America and the Sahara in Africa. So moving on to the deciduous forest. So the climate of the deciduous forest is that it's cool in the summer and it has mild winters. So the temperature of the deciduous forest is usually around 40 to 60 degrees Celsius. There is rain throughout the year and there is a great biodiversity of life in this biome, which include rich deciduous woodlands, for example, broad leaf trees, oaks, maples, beeches, shrubs and mosses. The leaves of deciduous trees change colour and fall off in the autumn and grow back in the spring. There's also a rich diversity of animals, including, for example, insects, moose, deers, bears, wolves, rabbits, birds, spiders, slugs, frogs, turtles, owls and red foxes. These deciduous forests are located in north and south of the equator. There is some in Canada, Scotland, Europe, China and Japan. Grasslands have a hot and wet climate with dry seasons. Their temperatures can vary between minus 20 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. They have about 500 to 900 millimetres of rainfall per year. Grasslands are wide open land with low growing plants, which consists mostly of grasses and a few plants. Many herbivores eat the grasses and they live in the grassland. For example, rabbits and zebras. There is a great biodiversity of life in this biome. So animals such as jaguars, elephants, mice, snakes, birds, bisons, antelope, birds, prairies, dogs and coyotes are common there. So some examples of grasslands are the prairies of the Great Plains of North America the Pampas of South America, the Veldt of South Africa and the Steppe of Central Eurasia. The climate of the taiga is long cold winters and short and mild summers with limited rainfall. The biodiversity in the taiga is low. Plants are usually coniferous trees in the taiga, for example spines, spruces and larches. And these plants keep their needles all year round so they can make the most of the sunlight. Animals that are are found in the taiga include foxes, lynx, bears, minks, reindeers and squirrels. The taigas are located in Canada, Alaska, parts of Sweden, Finland, Norway and the Scottish Highlands. The climate of the tundra is cold, so the tundra is below freezing for most of the year. An average temperature of the tundra is minus 7 degrees Celsius. There is usually slight snow in the tundra and there are only two seasons. There is a long dark winter and a short summer because it's so near the North Pole. The ground in the tundra is permanently frozen and there is a low biodiversity due to the harsh freezing conditions and a lack of nutrients. So almost no trees can survive due to the short growing season and the permafrost. So some things that might be found are lichens, mosses and grasses. There is not a lot of animals that are found in the tundra either, as they have to be specifically adapted to survive the harsh freezing conditions. But these animals that are found in the tundra include the arctic fox, the arctic hare, polar bears, seals and snowy owls. Tundras are found far north of the equator and are found in the arctic and they extend across North America, Europe and Siberia to high mountain tops. The climate of the tropical rainforest is hot and wet all year round. Rainforests are very humid places. Tropical rainforests are the biome that has the greatest biodiversity, so the biggest number of plants and animal species in it. So this includes plants such as vines, palm trees, orchids and ferns. Animals include, for example, butterflies, beetles, spiders, ticks, worms, snakes, dogs, parrots, monkeys, lizards, bats, 
anteaters, insects, sloths and jaguars. The rainforest is home to about half of the world's plants and animal species. It provides us with oxygen and medicines. Tropical rainforests are so large and dense that they are believed to have many unknown plants and animal species that are yet to be discovered. Tropical rainforests are located close to the equator. The largest rainforests are in the Amazon River Basin in South America, the Congo River Basin in Western Africa, and throughout much of Southeast Asia. Smaller rainforests are located in Central America, Madagascar, and Australia. So you can see by looking at all of the different biomes that they have distinctive climate, which means that they have a distinctive plant and animal community. So you have your low biodiversity in your harsh environment, where it is cold and dry or warm and dry, as plants and animals have to be specially adapted to survive in these harsh conditions. And you have your high biodiversities where your climate is warm and wet. So this video on biomes talks you through the biomes in more detail and it includes water biomes so it is worth watching. So you can either pause the video tutorial and watch it now or you could come back to this video at the end after you've watched the rest of the video tutorial. But my advice is to watch it. The next activity we would be doing in class is where you need to match the correct biome with the correct description. Again, this worksheet can be found in the Biomes 1 folder and it's labelled Activity 2, Worksheet 2. And you can use the information on this slide to help you. So the tundra being the coldest biome, no trees but low growing plants. And the taiga coniferous forest being the largest biome without having very cold winters, mainly pine trees. And the deciduous forest being the one with four seasons, cool in the winter and warm in the summer. The rainforest having very thick, wet and warm forests with high biodiversity. The desert being hot and dry and having little food and very few mammals can live there. And the savanna type of grassland having low rainfall, few trees and mainly grasses. And finally, the water having fresh water and salt water biomes. The last activity we would do in class is activity three. But activity three you might be a bit trickier to do it at home as it involves a lot of printing, cutting and sticking. So if you cannot do it, don't worry about it. If you do want to do it, you would cut all of the different rectangles along the dotted lines and then you would make a flip book. And you can find the booklet and instructions for this in your biomes one folder in worksheets and it's labeled activity three. So after you have cut out all of the things and made your flip book, you would then want to write the definition of biomes and then you would cut out and stick the correct description on the correct rectangle. So for example, your tundra would be a cold dry, mostly treeless biome that encircles the Arctic Ocean. Most of the ground is covered in permafrost, a soil that is frozen to the depth of one meter in habitat, include the polar bears and snowy owls. Now to make sure you know the different biomes, we would go through each of the biomes and you try to guess what it is. So what biome do you think this is? So pause the video and try to guess. So if you said desert, then you would be correct. Well done. So what one is this? Now this might be a bit trickier. So well done if you said it was your deciduous forest. Remember the leaves change colour in the deciduous forest. And for the next picture, what do you think it is? Well done if you said grassland or savanna. Now for this one, what do we think it is? Well done if you said water. And for this one, what do you think this one is? It is the tundra. For this one, what do you think it is? It is the rainforest. And for the last one, what do you think it is? So well done if you have put taiga. Well done if you've managed to get all of the biomes correct. 
If you've not managed to get the biomes correct, you might want to watch the video over again just to make sure that you've learned the information. Remember, it sometimes takes more than once to learn things. We've now come to the end of the lesson. Woohoo! You can now try to answer the success criteria, so pause the video if you want to answer it. So you should now be able to say that biodiversity is the range of species in an ecosystem. You should be able to say that a biome is an area of the planet that has a similar climate and contains distinctive communities of plants and animals. You should be able to identify the climatic conditions of the different biomes. So for example, your desert is hot and dry, your rainforest is hot, wet and humid and so forth. You should be able to state that climate affects biodiversity as only specifically adapted organisms can survive harsh conditions like freezing, condi freezing conditions or extreme heat. Therefore, places with harsh climates have a low biodiversity and places with mild climates, which are warm and wet, have a high biodiversity. So well done for listening. That brings us to the end of video one tutorial. And now you will be able to complete assignment one. Well done.